Hey y'all, today I'm going to share with you what is on the menu for my Easter dinner. I hope you guys love these recipes. Quite a few of these are a little bit unique and I think your family is going to absolutely love them. I am also going to be serving some greens, a salad, a dessert with this meal. Let me know in the comments what else you would pair with these dishes. Today, I am gonna show you my new favorite way to spice up a spiral ham. Now, I know everybody has tried your traditional honey glazed ham, brown sugar ham, and those are great. But today, we are going to step up that spice level by doing a pineapple jerk chipotle ham. Y'all, this one's gonna be a showstopper for the holiday table. It is very easy to make. Let's get into it. Now, I have a ham here. I believe it was nine and a half pounds. I like to get the ones that are already spiral cut because I don't like to be fiddled with cutting it later on. I'm gonna take out the plastic because there's no way I am going to bake some plastic and we are going to get started. Once I rinse my ham off, I'm gonna place it in a large baking dish and I'm gonna to start to use some toothpicks just to keep those slices that were on the outside, just to keep them all together. Then I made a spice rub with about two tablespoons of a low sodium jerk seasoning. I'm going to link the brand I use in the description, but it is so important that it's low sodium because you know this Piggly Wiggly is full of salt. Okay, into that jerk seasoning, I also added a little bit of smoked paprika just to up the flavor. I'm going to rub the spice rub all over the outside of the ham. You could actually get a little bit in between the slices, but I really don't work it that much into the in-between slices because I am going to be placing the pineapple. I have one can of sliced pineapple and I am gonna break some of those rings in half and just place them however I want between the slices of the ham. This pineapple is not only gonna add a great flavor to this dish, but it will also help to keep the ham moist while we are warming it up in the oven. Use some toothpicks just to keep everything in place because y'all know this thing is just trying to fall apart, okay. I do like to reserve three whole pineapple slices to put on the back just as a little bit of decoration. If you want, you can add the cherries, but I don't feel like the cherries match the flavor profile that I was going for this time. So I decided to leave them off. Let me know in the comment section, what is your favorite unique holiday ham recipe? We all know your honey glaze ham with cloves, which is great, but I am always looking for something a little bit different to show you guys. So give me some inspiration. For this ham, I am using one can of sliced pineapples. However, if you like a lot of pineapple flavor, feel free to use two cans. As I place the slices on the back, I'm gonna go in with some toothpicks just to make sure that everything is secure and that the pineapple slices don't fall out and get nice and caramelized. I'm gonna put about a fourth of a cup of pineapple juice at the bottom of the pan, just so that the ham won't dry out, especially while it's still trying to release its juices then I'm gonna cover it very tightly with foil and put it in a 325 degree oven for an hour and a half in that time I do not baste the ham because the temperature is so low I typically don't have it dry out but if you're afraid of that feel free to baste it halfway through while the ham is warming, I am going to add three fourths of a cup of pineapple juice, a fourth of a cup of some rum, a half of a cup of brown sugar, and a half of a cup of honey to a saute pan. I will also put in one chipotle in adobo. If you can handle the heat, baby, feel free to go ahead and add in two or three. All right, I'm gonna let this simmer on a medium low heat until the sauce is reduced to about half. You want it to have a little bit of stickiness to it because the ham is already going to release its juices. This is just so you add that extra sweetness and it will help your ham to caramelize. When it is done, I'm going to place it to the side and allow it to cool. It has been an hour and a half, so let's go ahead and take this big baby out the oven. All right. I am going to crank up the heat to 400 because we want this ham to caramelize and get nice and brown. Remember, when you buy a ham from the store, it's already cooked. 
we are just spicing it up and getting it presentation worthy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the foil off of this ham. And as you can see, a bunch of juices have sprung from this thing. I'm actually going to take quite a bit of this out. I don't want too much of this to mix with the glaze and just completely dilute it. And I'll just place it to the side. A lot of people like to dip their ham in these little ham juices. So I just take them and put them in a bowl I will lightly baste the ham, but I am doing it in a specific way. I'm going to take my baster and I'm intentionally going to go in between the slices of the ham because I don't want to wash off any of the jerk seasoning that I have put on the edge. Then I am going to glaze the ham all over, taking special attention to those pineapple slices. I want those to get a little caramelization, let them get browned up, okay? Let people know you know how to cook, okay? You know you see that melanated meat, you know you feel like the food gonna taste real good. And let me tell y'all, this ham is probably one of the best hams I have ever made. The moment I was done making this, my dad came over to visit and he pretty much took almost all the ham back home to my mom and my siblings so they could tear this up. He was like, this is so good. So y'all, I can tell you right now, this is approved by my family. So I'm going to stick this back into the oven for 25 to 30 more minutes until it is nice and brown and you have some caramelized edges on that ham. Baby, this is so good. With a piece of pineapple, you get that spicy, sweet, and salty combination that is just perfect paired with a potato side dish. Let me know if you're going to try this ham recipe this year. Everyone in your family is going to love this delicious southern style green beans and potatoes with bacon. These potatoes are super buttery. You have a delicious pot liquor as well as a little bit of salty bacon, but just not too much. Honey, these are so good. So first I'm going to slice up some onions and then just mince a few garlic cloves. Now you could go ham with the bacon, okay? But I choose to just use about three strips, but you could use up to about six six if you want lots of meat. I like to keep it a little bit minimal because these are fresh green beans and I want that fresh taste to come through. For the potatoes, you could choose any potato you like, but oh my goodness, these honey gold potatoes are the absolute best. They are very tender and buttery and they just have this cute golden color. I love them. So the ones that are a little bit large, I'm gonna cut those into fours and then the other ones I'm going to cut in half. And then I'm gonna place all the potatoes in a bowl of water because we don't want them to change color while we're prepping the rest of the dish. Next thing you want to do is that you want to put your Instant Pot on saute mode. This is going to cut on the bottom burner and then we are going to saute the bacon with some butter. Okay, y'all know I'm country so I got to have both. Okay, I'm going to saute this until the bacon has rendered its fat and it's nice and crispy. The bacon grease is gonna keep that butter from burning, so don't worry, you can go ahead and add that right in there, okay? Then you're gonna take out your crispy pieces of bacon and set them to the side and place in your onion to saute for about two minutes. I want a nice little color to get on them, and then I'm going to put in my garlic, and I'm gonna have that saute for about 30 seconds until it is nice and aromatic. Then you want to put in all of your potatoes. I am using about half of a pound of potatoes because I don't love tons of potatoes in my green beans. However, I know some of y'all are some potato lovers, okay? You could put up to a pound of potatoes into this dish. I have a really nice blend of spices. This is a little chicken bouillon, a little buttery steakhouse seasoning, some red pepper flakes, some white pepper, all of that is gonna be so good in this with these potatoes with a little bit of salt. So I put in half the seasoning blend and you know potatoes can just soak up some salt. So I'm putting some directly on them. I'm gonna mix this together and then add in one cup of chicken broth. If you decide to add more potatoes, you actually don't need to add more chicken broth unless you just want tons of pot liquor. I am using some pre-washed, pre-snipped green beans just to keep everything simple. Now, yes, y'all, I, I actually did go through and rinse them again because y'all know, you know, I'm black. We don't trust all of that stuff, okay? We do be rinsing it again, all right? 
and then I'm gonna put the rest of the seasonings on top of the green beans with some more butter, baby. Okay, you know it got to be some nice, good grass-fed butter. I'm gonna put an extra tablespoon right on top, lock on that lid, and this is only going to take five minutes to pressure cook. Now, baby, don't be doing more than that. Okay, your green beans just gonna break down into nothing, honey. This pressure cooker is strong. Okay, you don't need to do it for that long. So it's going natural pressure release for just three minutes and then I am going to quick release the rest of the way. I like to add a little kitchen towel on the back of the little release vial just so water doesn't spur everywhere around my kitchen. When that nozzle drops, you know you can open your instant pot lid and then, ooh baby, when I tell you this is nice and good, Honey, you're going to like this, all right? So I just pushed aside the green beans. I'm going to show you them potatoes. They are indeed tender. They're tender, but they're not completely falling apart, and they're not mushy. They're the perfect texture. And the best part for me is that these green beans still got some fight in them, okay? I, I just can't eat super mushy green beans. I don't like that at all. I just prefer to have a bit of texture. Now, them onions and gave up the ghost, but ain't nobody checking for the onions, okay? They just making everything else taste good. Once I've plated everything up, I'm going to sprinkle the bacon on top so that it will be a little bit crispy and honey. This is a wonderful, delicious side dish. Today, I am here to share with you a recipe that will just tug on your heartstrings and remind you of your mama's good old cooking. Baby, this is that type of food that you have on a Sunday table or an Easter table, and everyone just loves it. In this video, I am going to take a classic recipe and then also put a little twist on it that I'm sure a lot of you guys aren't gonna expect. So y'all, let's get into it. So first I'm gonna start with three to three and a half pounds of rustic potatoes. I'm gonna wash them really good and then I am going to peel them. You wanna use a sharp knife to cut your potatoes into slices. When you get to the end of that potato, honey, do not try to be a hero, all right? You may whack off the tips of them fingertips. Just turn that end down and then slice it across, okay? Just like this. We are looking for slices that are about a fourth of an inch or a little bit less in thickness. You could use a mandolin, but honestly, I don't like mandolins. I feel like they're a little bit dangerous. And not only that, I don't slice like this very often, and my chef knife can do the work. Okay, that's what it's made for. In the comments, tell me one of your favorite recipes that your mother makes or just a recipe that reminds you of home. Go ahead and share it, and I may be able to make it on the channel. Once I have my potatoes sliced, I am going to put them in a bowl of cold water so that they don't go brown while I am prepping the other ingredients. And I also like to give them a little scrub-a-dub-dub just to get off any excess starch. One of the stars of this dish is some leeks. Now I know these leeks look a little beat up, okay? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. These leeks been sitting at the back of that fridge for probably at least a good two weeks, okay? But y'all, y'all know this ain't no professional kitchen. Baby, this is home cooking, so I'm sure enough going to use these leeks today. All right, we're just going to chop off the ends that looking a little, you know, so-so. We're going to peel off them layers that's looking rough, and we're going to get on to it. Once you have finished prepping your leek, you're then going to cut it in half the long way and then put it into some half moon slices. Today I am using two leeks. Ideally, you should use three or four leeks, but honey, leeks is so expensive right now. These jokers is $4 for two. Okay, so I just couldn't spend $8 on no onions. But hey, if you got it like that, then go ahead and do it. When they grow leeks, they tend to pile a lot of dirt on the stem of the leek to make that long, white, beautiful stem. However, that technique also tends to trap a lot of dirt in between the layers. So I like to add water to a bowl of the already sliced leek and then really agitate it so that any dirt will fall to the bottom. Then I'm gonna lift the leek slices out of the water. I'm not just gonna pour the water out because any dirt that's left is going to fall to the bottom. I have a 12 inch enamel cast iron skillet and into this I'm going to be adding some butter baby. A good old fat tablespoon with a little bit of oil. Now honey, I'm not promising you fat free, low carb, nothing with this recipe. I told you this was gonna be like mama's. I ain't tell you this was gonna be, you know, Weight Watchers, okay? 
I'm also going to add in like half of an onion that I sliced up finely because that was sitting in my fridge and I wasn't going to let it go to waste. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and then I'm going to saute this on a medium to a medium low heat for about a good 7 to 10 minutes. You really want those leeks to cook down, get a little bit brown. That is going to bring out the sweetness and the richness of the leeks. Then I'm going to put in five cloves of garlic that I've minced and some fresh herbs. I'm using rosemary and thyme today and I'm going to be generous because I love these herbs paired with potatoes. And there's a lot of potatoes here. You know potatoes tend to be bland so hey go at it. I'm also going to use some vegeta. This is like a vegetable bouillon. It has a lot of salt in it. So in this recipe I will be using this like salt. If you don't have vegeta, then you can use salt instead. I'm also going to use some white pepper and about a tablespoon of flour. I'm going to mix this until the flour becomes lightly browned. While I am not going to be making a sauce with the leeks, you will see the genius of this later on in this recipe. When these leeks have cooked and that flour is toasted, I'm going to take them out and just try to scrape most of the scraps out of the pan. But certainly do not wash it because there is flavor in this pan. I'm adding a little bit more butter and then I'm going to turn the heat on the eye down to the lowest heat setting. I'm going to begin making some layers in my skillet. First, I'm going to add a layer of potatoes and then I am going to season them because remember, I've added no flavor to these potatoes. I'm using white pepper, vegeta, and this all purpose seasoning. This all purpose seasoning is a mixture of some pepper, salt, a little bit of paprika, some herbs and spices. So if you don't have this specific brand, just use whatever brand is similar to that. I'm then going to add on a little bit of cheddar cheese as well as a little bit of the leek mixture. And I'm going to spread that leek mixture around because I'm telling you that is going to take this dish over the top. You're going to continue to layer until you have all your potatoes and your cheese in. I am using in total about eight ounces of cheddar cheese and four ounces of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. However, some Swiss, some Gouda or some Gruyere cheese would be amazing in this dish. When you get towards the top layer, I don't like to add cheese to the top just yet. I'll just add some seasonings and then I am going to pour in one cup of heavy cream, one cup of evaporated milk, and about half of a cup of water. Instead of parboiling the potatoes, I am going to cover these potatoes cook them on about a two on an electric stove for about 10 minutes and then that will soften them up enough before they go into my preheated oven at 375 degrees. I really like this method because I don't have to boil them first in a separate pot. As they simmer they start to create a sauce with the flour that was in that leek mixture. I'm putting this in the oven covered at 375 degrees for 40 minutes. Then I'm going to uncover the potatoes and I'm going to sprinkle on whatever cheese I left to the side. So I just left about two ounces of cheese or so just to sprinkle on the top. And I'll also be adding on a few herbs like rosemary because they look really pretty when they brown just a bit. I'm going to slide this back in for 10 more minutes until that cheese is melted and there is a nice little golden brown color. Oh my goodness, this is so bubbly and delicious, but don't let the greedy spirit get you because you definitely need to wait about 15 minutes before cutting into this so that that sauce that's between the potatoes will set and so you don't burn the top of your mouth. I know a lot of y'all got battle wounds just from being greedy and eating food that was too hot. Now y'all, if you don't take a look at this cheesy, buttery, herby potatoes, honey, these are so good. And the moment you bite into that little leek mixture, you will know that this was all worth it. Let me know if you are going to try this recipe. 
our next recipe is going to be a Aquaman meat and shrimp pasta salad. Because y'all know that real crab is expensive. But if you want to use that real crab, baby, go ahead and do it. Okay. To start, we are going to boil some water and add in two shrimp bouillon cubes and some salt. I love to add the bouillon cubes because they really add a great flavor. If you don't have shrimp, you can use chicken bouillon instead. I'm gonna add 12 ounces of elbow macaroni and I'm gonna cook this according to the package instructions. Then I am going to drain my noodles and I am going to rinse them off very well. This is a cold pasta dish, so you do indeed need the pasta to be chilly okay I even like to spray on just a little bit of olive oil so that as the pasta cools it doesn't clump together then I'm going to add this to a container and I'm going to stick this in the fridge until it is completely cooled down so here I go with the Aquaman meat now y'all know real crab is hot it was literally $40 a pound at Walmart and my mama loves seafood salad and she was like girl you gonna make me some and I was like, mama, if I put that real crab in there, can't nobody eat this pasta salad. It said me and you. Not even my daddy can get some. Not the siblings can get some. Dad gonna have to wait till, you know, Father's Day or his birthday to get some of this seafood salad. So I went up in there with, you know, that imitation crab. And I just cut it into sticks and made it work. Now, of course, instead, you could add a pound of real crab. If you do that, though, just make sure you adjust the seasonings because real crab has a bit of a sweeter taste and you don't want to cover it up. I'm going to start by making the dressing for the salad. So I'm putting in some mayonnaise and then some sweet relish. I'm also going to use some sweet and spicy mustard, but Dijon mustard will be just fine, as well as the juice of half of a lemon. Of course, this is seafood, so I'm going to use some Old Bay. I'm also going to add in a little bit of garlic powder, pepper, Creole seasoning. Honey, you can just go in here and season this to your taste. At the end of the day, how much seasoning you add and how much mayo and relish you add is going to depend on how much pasta you made, okay? Now, I'm going to use some finely diced Trinity. I like to cut it small so that there's a little bit in every bite. And then I'm going to mix this up well. Of course, you want to taste your dressing to make sure it's where you want it to be, okay, before you add everything. Now, my secret ingredient is about a fourth of a cup of sour cream. This is going to add a nice tanginess and creaminess that's a little bit different than the mayo. And people are not going to exactly know what it is, but it's going to be you and our secret, okay? Now I'm going to add in my cool down noodles as well as my Aquaman meat. And I have 12 ounces of small shrimp. They were already cooked. I defrosted them and I am going to mix this together. I can tell you right now that if you make this seafood pasta salad, folks is going to start putting some respect on your name. Do you hear me? At the cookout, they're going to be like, hey, there's a new cook in town. Okay. Now, I don't know if you want that label, so you maybe don't want to make it. But I'm just telling you, it's that good. Okay. I adjusted the seasonings with some chive, a little bit of sugar, a little more shrimp bouillon that I ground up finely, and lemon pepper. And... I let this sit overnight so that the pasta could really absorb all of that flavor. Now, you guys know if the recipes coming from Kamir's Kitchen is definitely a winner. Let me know which of these recipes you are going to put on your Easter table. And don't forget that Jesus loves you. He has died for you and to save you from your sins. Guys, don't forget he is the real reason for Easter. It's not the candy. It's not the bunnies. And we show sure enough love the food. But I do worship my King Jesus. I'll see you guys next time in Kamira's Kitchen. Goodbye and God bless.